Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. To one, today I'm gonna be giving you part 23 of what if Naruto was put through hell and adopted by the Raikage. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto was exiled from the Osuski clan and enjoyed that, guys. And remember, if you're new, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the Anime King family. Yes, if you haven't heard yet, I indeed have three channels. Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, what is to begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last spot we left off, Donzo got a message from the Land of Iron, given the fact that he did not notify things, and Minato was a crafty bastard who agreed with the signing date of giving Ruto back. He had to find Ruto, a tracker would be coming from the Land of Iron, so he got a team, as it was Sakura Haruno and Yakumo, as they were supposed to help the tracker find the Jinjuriki, given the fact that there has been no recent Sightings of Nine Tails, it meant, as Kakashi was one to say it, the baby that Minato stolen that he had sealed it inside of her. That little girl that from Ujeo, he sealed it inside of her. It made sense now. So with that, Kakashi was one to bring them towards Kumo. Meanwhile, as Danzo was just enjoying how things were playing out, because the way he said things, his name would never be involved in this. At the hidden ring, Kushina had found a relative and that was Nagato. She was helping the children of the Hinarine, the orphanage, as she was there with Conan cooking. She didn't remember much what happened but Minato filled her in that Naruto was being used as an operative from Danzo and he tried to kill them. Despite that though she wanted to make sure that she tried her best to change her son back to the right path and also she could not find Kasumi. As a girl was said to be at the hidden sun but now she was completely gone. We then skipped to Katsumi as Sasuke was heading out, as he was supposed to find this tracker as well. As it was their mission to bring the man back so they could find the 9th Jinjoliki, the one that Beast was hiding now, as Katsumi and Tewaya and Karin was going with him. Meanwhile, Yujita woke up as she was being carried. C and Derui arrived before she could make her way to the village, as the man that was carrying her was brought to the office, as he introduced himself as he was a tracker for the Land of Iron. As Yujita was really pissed seeing that he never told her that, the man also spoke about the previous Jinjoliki and he kind of pissed Raikage off but he didn't say anything else as he made his way. He passed by the cemetery where uncle was as she was drunk and asleep. As he took her, he was able to find her apartment and brought her there and placed her down. Yujita was there though, ready to decapitate the man if he did anything lewd to uncle while she was asleep but he simply shrugged her off he didn't do anything as such as he was thinking. As he made his way, she should have warned him that he was going into the den where Kuro was, but the man really pissed her off and not to mention he was talking bad about Naruto. If Kuro swallowed and ripped him apart, it was his fault for going there. As she noticed that he did not come out after hours passed, perhaps Kuro did eat him. Meanwhile, Kuro was pissed off as Naruto had hide himself this entire time as Kuro knew that that was Naruto. As a small white snake apologized for being so rough with him out there, she didn't know. But Naruto simply shook her off as he patted her on her head. He then told them of what happened. As how the snake trained him, it was brutal and wicked. And the things that he had to endure, the things that he had to go through. And he also met his two French snakes here. As he told them what happened. Once again he was put through hell. But this time he came back a lot stronger. But he was still hiding his identity from the others around him. But Kuro would like to know how did he fake his death. As Naruto went on to tell him. So yeah guys, so it's basically let's play the top you guys can switch across the place for yourself so it's the beginning to see you episode. Wait, that body shedding technique. 
You use that faker death, said Koro. That means you could have tried to escape. Why didn't you try and get away? That is why Naruto died that day. And Tarna was born. Koro. I could have tried to run. But Hakicho, no I wouldn't. And I didn't need to. Mind you. I was beaten, tortured, battered. For most of my life, but with Hakicho. He taught me things. And I learned a lot. And I couldn't leave the new batterings of snakes to the old system that Hakijo used. So it turned as he jumped down, as he landed right in the center. Took me a long, long time, but in two years I was done. But still, you could have left something, a note, saying that I was off train or something, said Yoru. Not a dead body. Truthfully, Hakijo had kept me away from the other snakes. Manda, the older ones, they think I'm dead. And the next time Urchimaru summoned Manda, He's gonna be in for a surprise. And also, Hakijo, he offered me the master. Scroll of sneaks. And I'm thinking about merging the two. That is why I came here to see you, Kuro. It took me a while, but the upper eggs have changed. And the younger ones, like Yami and Hikari, are on board. You're the boss and my friend, Tarana. And you know I trust you. But first, let's get some meat on your bones. Looks like you haven't been eating in a while. Properly. Look at your cheeks, said Kuro. Mother Snake Mode, engage. In 3, 2, 1, said Yoru. And with that, Shiro Chan was tasked with a morning delivery of ramen, as it was a large, large quantity, as a feast was happening that day. Hey, are you the author by any chance of murder of the 6th snake? The His Collection. Shiro Chan cannot stop babbling about that horror author. Well, yeah, I started writing to release my stress, but then I took it up professionally for cash. Hakijo did not drop me anywhere near Kumo or Kanoha. No, he dropped me in the Three Wolf Mountain Peak, right in the damp coal. And I was completely naked, mind you, until I came upon a pack of wolf. And then I got some clothing, said Naruto. Had to tear those wolf apart. And then I found a cave with a couple of bandits inside. Yeah, and then you call us, said Hikari, right in the coal. After getting some more suitable clothes, I found a couple of samurais. It turns out that they knew the bandits were there and were just waiting on them to make their move. And because of their honor code, and I took care of the bandits, I was thanked. And I was paid for the job that they were supposed to do. He released a tired sigh. I hated my weak self, my old weak, pitiful self, who believed that not everything was out to kill me. I lost a dear friend that day when I died, who was always there, always there to talk to me, no matter where I was or if I was alone, as he was speaking about the Kayubi. But that day, I truly died, in that cave, when my so-called father removed the Kayubi out of me, I met the old man. He figured that Donzo would want to take the Kayubi away, just in case. If I become a worthless tool, I saw the sorrow and grief on his face. He wanted me to have a better life. A future for me to run and find somewhere else just in case his sacrifice turned out for the worse so I truly died back then I am not Naruto I am Tarna Naruto is the thing I hate the most I despise him the most Kuro understand this I can't stand my former self I left him back in that cave I will return to be him only on my dead bed and it really hurts to see my sisters crying to see them filled with grief it hurt to see people mourning for my death and to see them reserving seats for when I come back. But I can't do that and I hate Naruto even more. He was too weak, he was too pitiful to survive and he died and he broke so many people and now they're a mess because of him and I hate him. If I show myself now and they tie me down, I'm gonna be happy once again with the people I love but then something, someone will come and something will happen. I'd rather stay by myself as long as I keep them alive. You truly believe that, said Kuro, as he narrowed his eyes. What are you hiding? I made a promise, Kuro, said Tarna. I promised Kayuba I would free her from her new host. That is why I became the best tracker of the Land of Iron. Why I insist on Mithun that I be sent here to track it down. I lied to the man that gave me his trust. I lied to the chief of the Land of Iron, who expected me to come back and told him I completed the mission. Instead, I'm going to free the Kayube. And, most likely, I'm going to have to battle her. Because she won't go around without harming anyone. We both know that. I'm strong. But will I be able to defeat her? I don't know. 
but I won't go back on my words. I'm really sorry I failed you, as a friend he said, as he waited for Kuro to say something. But all the snake did was chuckle. You're forgetting something boy, said Kuro. Remember, I am Kuro, the wind snake, the silent darkness, the biter of the apocalypse. And you and I are friends, no, even more than that, we're brothers. Only, not in blood. And if you think this is the right thing to do, I'll still try to convince you it is wrong. But I'll stick with you till the end, because I trust you. Naruto or Tarana, it doesn't matter who you are, I trust you. I'll stay with you until the very end. Can't let you suffer alone after all. As Tarana had his eyes closed as he nodded, trying to fight back the tears. He was Tarana, the 25-year-old man who was the best track of the land of iron, not Naruto. Not that teenager who was trapped in a man's body. No, he wasn't going to cry. And I'm Yoru, the blaze trailer, the burner of the apocalypse. I am the flame snake, said Yoru. And I'll stay with you until the end as well. Oh, that is what he meant when he said introductions, Ikeru said. Hey, I'm Yami, the scornful, scorcher of sorrows, the scaly flamethrower, Yami. The fiery snake, and I'll stick with Tarnaka until the end of the world. As Yami hissed that out, repressing her laughter herself, he carried his face turned pitiful. That's not fair. I didn't come prepared. Well, I'm Hikari, the black, black scales of the shadows, the wind blade, the snake of the scales. Hikari, the cutting snake. Cutting snake said Naruto. As everyone burst out laughing, Hikari rolled his eyes as he started about. I'll find something better. It's gonna leave you all in awe. And I am Shiro. Shiro paused as she saw them laughing as she came down. What's going on, uncle? Oh, it's nothing, said Yoru as he patted her head. So tell me, seeing that you promised me few, you gonna break that promise? No. After I free the Kyube, I'm gonna steal it again. That is why. I mastered Fujutsu. And then I'll have it delivered to Kumo, he said. So you will subject someone else to your pain, said Kuro. Sure, it was an instant, but how much did Naruto tear up to learn medical ninjutsu? He really did not mind. No, said Naruto. I know, once a Jinjulke lose a Biju, your heart stops beating, and there's no more chakra left in the body. So, having chakra transferred to the body with a swift heart massage and flooding the point with yin and yang chakra, that is how the old man saved me from death. Then it's fine. Hey, shiro -chan, when's the ramen coming? Asked Kuro. It's not. Someone order two. Naruto special. Supplies are finished until next week. As everyone groaned in pain. As Turner relaxed. But he was never too relaxed like before. Time skip. So he's married. Hm. I didn't see a ring on his finger, Uncle said. As both girls made their way, she and Yujito towards the hill of snakes. To see if the tracker was completely devoured by the snakes or not. You were dead drunk when I came to check on you. But he just dropped you on the couch. And left. That was all. I can't remember some of it. Even pet my snake. Like it was normal. I admit, I was not want to jump on him. But he put me to sleep in a way. Well, I am Uncle Midarashi. I'll find out where he learned all that stuff from. Before they could say anything else, laughter could be heard. As the two snakes that were guarding the entrance, Uncle looked at them. What was that? They shook their head they did not know. But it was so damn early, and laughter has been going on ever since. I hope they aren't laughing. About how good the chakra tastes. The Raikage wouldn't be happy about that at all. And tomorrow's the day as well, Yuchito said. As she knew that the other day was the 10th of October. And she hoped no one will be preparing for a war. Especially on that day. So speak the woman who could have avoided all of that, said Uncle. As they made their way inside, where a party was going on. It's cold, said Koro. I understand that it was in storage, but it's cold nonetheless. As they were eating ramen. Not my fault next time you learn. Not a bit against Snake Stage, Tarna. The best tracker of Land of Iron. As Yujito and Uncle stood there. Shocked at the event that they saw playing out in front of them. Hi Uncle Chan, Yujito Chan. Pops is having a chat with his new contractor, said Shiro. As she flew towards her own bowl of ramen. What? said Yujito. Why? This didn't make any sense. This man was talking about Naruto rudely. Kuro's best friend. This shouldn't be happening, she couldn't understand. He's a sage of the snakes and he has brought change to the way the snakes work from within, said Kuro in a hiss. He did that, which a boy I love like a brother, promised to do. And no matter how rude he is, I respect him for that and deem him worthy of all my summons. 
and I also accept the merger of the scrolls. After all, it would be stupid not to. As Yujito saw the man's eyes, they were a dark blue, not purple, as she thought that, and that smile. He reminded her so much of, anyway, let's not talk about the day the man said. As she clenched her fist, he was a rude bastard. Has the right Kage decide who will accompany me? Or, are you here to ask for something he asked? Well, I have a question, Uncle said. Where's your marriage ring if you're married? And if you're not, do you swing the other way? After all, getting someone like me alone drunk and not doing anything. She said with a teasing tone as she watched him to see his reaction. I'm betrothed. That's like being married. A contract is a contract, he said. He already prepared his lie just in case. He hoped uncle did not see through him and I wouldn't have touched someone who clearly was in a right state of mind, he said. Ah, oh, a gentleman. A proud samurai by heart. I'm sure that you're the chair of your team, right? Uncle said. As she stuck her tongue out at him. As he realized what she was doing. As a vein bulged on his forehead. Well, two can play that game, he said. I know what hurt you the most, woman, he said. As he narrowed his gaze on Uncle. And trust me, you don't want to play this game. I can leave you a crying mess on the floor within seconds. Yujito stepped in front of Uncle. She was just joking with you. I'm not someone to joke with, said Turner. I am someone here to work with what your Raikai has to offer, and that is final, nothing more, nothing less. You could at least try to get along with others, who will be helping you on this mission, and pouring salt on the wounds, especially in these times, said Yujito as she clenched her fist tight. Why? I thought there would be a line of volunteers. The boy was very like, wasn't he? I'm sure there is no problem finding an idiot who would throw their life away for this boy. As Yujito neared her eyes, but she didn't notice something was wrong. The snakes were not angry, even Koro was not angry. They were sad, not angry. Anger like this as she had to grab out the uncle, preventing her from hurting this man as she wanted to attack him. What? Does the snake mistress of Kanoha have something to say? Or do you prefer to be called? Sis, uncle broke away from Yujito as she moved forward. Don't you dare say that! The man flashed to a one-handed seal and slammed his hand down. Snakes rose from the ground and grabbed Uncle. As Yujito moved, as the two black and white snakes came in front of her, stopping her. What are you doing? She's... As Tarna turned towards Yujito, she attacked a messenger from Land of Iron. Therefore, her life is mine to decide. From now on, until Mithun Sama judge her, she will be working for me. Or I can kill her right now. If that is what you wish for, said Tarna. Uncle spat in his face. Kill me then. I'd rather die than work for a man like you. Oh well, a pity. Would you think the same if I told you he might still be alive? As Uncle and Yujito narrowed their eyes, no, he was lying, he was toying with them. As Yujito saw Kuro tense, you know something that made Kuro accept you. What is it she said? First, answer my question. Should I kill her or should she work for me? As Yujito bite her lip and clench her fist, she wanted to rip this man to pieces. Hold on to her friend like that. But she should work for you. She couldn't let Uncle get killed right here. Uncle was dropped to the ground. As she narrowed her eyes at this man dangerously, his grip, his attitude, everything about him reminded her of someone. Aruchimaru. Know that we have fixed your attitude. Is there anything else that you want from me? Yujido shook her head. But Uncle spoke. You know Aruchimaru. How can you expect to be trusted? You can be a fake, she said. The Hokage read the scroll. And my strength is second to none. Trust me, woman, you will be dead if I wish for it. Now, until your judge are mine. Now tell me every single thing that you know about Naruto. No, that's nothing more than torture, said Yujito. Then next time she will learn to keep her hands to herself. Now, I expect a written report on everything about him. Understood? Uncle gave a barely, slightly nod. Before she walked away leaving, Yujito clenched her fist. You haven't answered me. Why do you think he's still alive? Well, Orochimaru is alive, isn't he? Oh, you thought I was talking about the boy in that cave? Oh, he's dead. Get over it. As Uncle clenched her fist as she was at the cave entrance. As Yujito gazed her and murderous. Before she looked up towards Kuro. Kuro. Why, she said. I'm sorry, but I'm bound not to harm any of my contractors, he said. I understand. She then turned towards him. One day, I'll make you eat your words. As she glared at Tarna. 
as the man didn't say anything as she ran off, gone for her friend. Well that was cruel said Yami as she came over. I think I got some dirt on my scales here, would you mind having a look? As she pressed it right in his face. As she hid his tears, that seeped from his eyes. It was hard, painful, it ripped him apart to say those words, but it was the only way to not link him to Naruto. The only way that he couldn't see through his act for him to act like an arrogant jerk that everyone hated. And he saw the state uncle was in because of him. Miserable, painful state. And she wouldn't come out of it. He had to forcefully put her out of it. And it's going to be painful. And it's tearing him apart inside. So, if the sorrow was still there, he would turn all the hatred towards him. To make them forget about their pain, he would make them hate him as much as possible. So that he could suffer. And they could feel free. Move on with your life. Because he couldn't watch them go on like this anymore. Damn it. It was always his fault, wasn't it? Meanwhile, with the Kanoa team. So, that was interesting, said Kakashi. As he stared at the panty in Yakumo, she had summoned a giant Naruto that was armed to the teeth with kunais and shurikens and swords to face off a group of bandits. Really interesting, he said. Yeah, said Sakura, as Yakumo started to bluff slightly. I mean, not every day you see something like that, Sakura said. Anyway, why do we have to go all the way to Kumo? Couldn't they meet up with us halfway? You never know. The Raikage might want to see who might come look for that bastard as Kakashi clenched his fists. To this day, he couldn't call that man your sensei ever again after what he did. As Kakashi was sure that was the reason why he took the baby, the seal, the teal beast inside of her, and he just took her like that. And perhaps the Raikage will come storming to Kanoha. To ask Donzo why didn't he send the two best trackers? What if there is no lead, said Yakumo? We might have to go on all the elemental lands. It might take years. The fact that she hadn't given enough goodbye hugs to her family was making her feel regret now. Well, if it happens, it happens, Sakura said. But I'm sure for the Kyube, the leader of a samurai, will spear his best tracker for this. So, I'm sure it wouldn't take too long, said Sakura. As Kakashi tried to remember something. You know, the best tracker of the land of iron. Is a man that is known as Torna of the Snakes. He's also the archer of the boat that Renchan likes so much, and he's ranked as an extremely high rank figure in his country, said Kakashi. Why didn't you say that sooner, Kakashi sensei? said Yakumo, as it was really him. She loved his stories, but at night she was scared, thinking that snakes would come out of the bathroom and the ceiling and devour her. But his stories, his stories were amazing. Hmm. Sakura decided that she would get an autograph for her mother. If it was him. If he's really the best though, do you think you'll really spear him? Well, he's an extremely powerful shinobi Sakura-chan, and he's also known as the most ruthless killer for the samurais. He's a neutral entity so he's not on any bingo books. Well then, let's hope that it's not him, said Sakura. Why? Because, said Yakumo, as she looked towards Kagashi, we are the ones that are gonna kill that bastard, not this samurai, us. These girls hate him Minato more than anything else. Kakashi was indeed gonna help them, and that day was coming, the 10th of October, his birthday. Meanwhile, with the sound team, so we just have to get to Kumo before the Kanoha team, Karen said, as Sasuke growled for the 10th time. Yes, so we have to be there by the end of October. Those weak Kanoha ninja will take their leisure time to get there. Tomorrow we have to stop those as Myra. I have to do a birthday party for me and my brother. Tewa is about to say something but Karen shook her head no. Birthday party? Why not mourn him? After all, he's dead. Sasuke couldn't get to finish that sentence. As a tree that he was running on, he had to leap away. Several wind slashes tore through the entire bushes, ripping apart trees. As Sasuke flipped and turned towards the girl, who leaped towards him her blade, ready to cleave his head off as he ducked. She sliced through the tree as Sasuke flipped. His sharing and activate and looked deep within her eyes as she moved towards him. She staggered back as he placed her under again jutsu. Idiot, don't you know that you shouldn't make fun or say those things in front of her? Now she's gonna try to kill you when she wakes up. You have to apologize. Then I'll just drop her here, Sasuke said, as all of them were dead weight to him. Shithead, and when she break free, she'll come and murder you in your sleep. Do you really want her as your enemy, said Tiawe. Last time someone did something stupid like that in the dining hall. Entrails and organs were everywhere. So. Go ahead, don't apologize. Sasuke growled. 
She's waking up. What are you going to do, said Tewaya? Fine. As he apologized, she calmed herself. I'll forgive you. But don't say that again. Alright, said Samira. Let's go. Time skip. At Kumo, October 10th. The Toad Sage came back to Kumo. As he knew what the day ahead of him was going to be. And he heard who was the tracker. And he also wished to meet him. True to be told, he also wanted to meet another writer. The man had to be swimming in riches. After all his books were getting advanced sales. Another thing about him was his life history. He was found in a mountainside in a cave. In just mere bandit clothing. And he had nothing on his past. Not even the greatest spy networks. Jarius included knew anything about the man. What he did know was. The man was rude, incredibly so. And he belittled his prey. But he was one of the best trackers. Despite his attitude. Yes, he was one of the best. And now as Jarius found out that he used sneaks. So he must be the man that Zabuza fought. But Zabuza was no longer here. The miss in Bastar was gone. So he would just have to ask the man himself. A thing he was going to do. But he found the man right at the gates. I smelled toads yesterday. Hmm. No doubt that he would come back, Toad Sage. As the man lowered his hood, Azaria saw that reddish stained blonde hair with dark blue eyes, scales covering his cheek, and the country for Sage on his back. Turn, son, right? Your arrogance is as bright as the sun. But do not worry, with my next book, I'll take you down, and you will see that porn is better than horror, said Jarea as he pointed a finger at the man. The man simply waved him off. I can't understand why people see what's a sage. You should be known as a pervert, pervious age, or a sinning. As Jerry looked at the man trying to gaze his strength, the way he talked to him, he must be strong. Either he was just cocky, or he was ridiculously strong. He didn't look like he was afraid of nothing. The way he stand, there was something just so confident about him. So, are you here to belittle me, see that you got in my path, or is there something that you want? Like the autograph or something, said Jaren. I wish to fight you, said Turner. I was taught by the great white snake sage himself. And I wish to prove my strength against another, Sonin. Strange things to ask, but not today. Got somewhere to be, Jaren says. He started to walk away. Let me guess, said Turner. Gonna go to a party? Hmm, I think I should come around. I have a party to destroy. As Jaren turned towards the man, his gaze was murderous. Don't you dare. Oh, I will, dear, said Tarna. And then I'll hunt down your ex-student and make him tell me what happened to the Kayubich and Jolke. Then I'll make sure you get what you want. Meet me at the Hill of Storms. Five minutes from now, Jaria said. He was going to show this to the punk. Who he was and put him in his place. As Tarna smiled. A lot can be done in five minutes. Time skip. Showdown. Jaria was standing there on the hill. Another lightning storm looked like it was about to come. This was a really stupid place to have a battle, but it was a perfect place for Jerry to have it, as he was going to put that arrogant man in his place. He was sure that right now Snaddy was probably winning something. She always did that whenever he did something suicidal, but she wasn't here she couldn't come. After all, Donzo hadn't let her leave Kanoha in the past three years at all. As Jerry saw the man coming towards him, his aura was different completely. His feet was treading on the ground, leaving no footprints behind. I'm not here to play. I'm going to go all out, Erosene. You know, you can always apologize. You may value yourself as a strong shinobi, but you have little hopes to fight and defeat me, said Jiraiya. Turn a chuckle. My, my, are you scared? Well, toads are always afraid of snakes. Is that the way that you cower in front of Urchimaru? Shin sank him, said Jiraiya. There was a poof. As a stone sword appeared in his hand, all the way from Mount Miyaboku, as he growled angrily, his eyes glaring dangerously toward this man, just one hit from this, and you'll be tainted by the nature and injury of the toads. And as a sage, I hope you know how dangerous this is to you. Jaria tense. Ready? Turn a simple smile. As Jaria shot forward with unbelievable speed. As Jaria appeared and swung his blade, it ripped right through Turner, who poofed away. Jaria twisted and blocked the wind charged blade from Turner behind him. As Turner moved back, he attacked Jaria with a burst of wind. Jaria smirked, first style, indent, as he released a massive fireball. The wind and the fire collided as Jaria increased the temperature of the fireball, and he came rushing back to Turner's weak technique that he had released a long time ago. 
not enough chakra to blast back at Jiraiya, as Turner was enveloped by the flames. Close, but not close enough. Needle Jaizo said Jiraiya, as his ear extended block in the kunai that almost slit his throat right open. As Turner jumped backwards, Jiraiya's ear extended abs, the tip of it turned like a lion mouth and reached after Turner in mid ear. But Turner somehow pushed himself out of mid ear with wind. But Jiraiya smirked as the needles from his ear extended and fired offwards, piercing into Turner. But then the man poofed away once again. Well, who's a coward now? Just fighting through clothes. A waste of chakra, seeing that you can't hit me once. The groan exploded under Jiraiya as he was forced to jump away. As snakes emerged in a dozen as Turner came up from the ground. Alright, here I am. Why don't you come see what I can do? Jiraiya flashed two hands and slammed his hand down as the ground turned to mud as the snake started to sink. But Turner simply walked on top of it. Interesting. Chakra coat in mud. It consumed Chakra to stand upon it though. As Jiraiya went to hands and slammed his hand down as a massive toad appeared above Turner and started to drop to crush into death. Summoning, said Turner. Scaly Chan, head button special. Jiraiya eyes went wide. That summon. It was Naruto's. Had Kuro gone insane and give this man. No, he wouldn't do that. Or perhaps he defeated Kuro. Or perhaps this man was Naruto. A massive snake with the head covered in rocks. Slam head first into the toad. Soft belly and he poofed away. The snake didn't poof away as well. How the hell did you do that? said Jiraiya. As he nerded his eyes at the man. You're not taking me seriously, old pervert. I said go all out. Seni Jashu. Thousands of snakes came from Garner and shot forward as Jiraiya speed through Hansen. Jiraiya released a massive stream of fire that slammed into the snakes as a groan exploded from the impact as Garner jumped back. Jiraiya appeared behind him another one as Garner leaped out of the way. Two can play with child clones, said Jiraiya as Garner and the clones started to battle. Meanwhile, the other Jiraiya, Sumin, Fukazaku and Shima-san. As Jiraiya watched as Turner was simply playing with his shadow clone. Despite the clone moving fast and had the blade, Turner was simply fighting it back with kunas and shurikens. That man's giving you a problem, Jiraiya boy. Have you realized it yet? Fukazaku said, as both him and Shima leap on the toad stage. They land on his shoulder as they start to gather, nature chakra. What, said Jiraiya? That is when Jiraiya saw it, the green aura. He was lying about being a sage. Jiraiya blinked in shock. He's been in sunning mode since the beginning. As he watched the man crush the head of his clone and stood there with that small cocky smile on his face. Took you long enough to realize it, pervert. Here I thought my cheeks would give it away. <laughs> Must be an idiot. Jerry blinked in shock, but that would mean. Even in his sage mode, Jerry took on a different appearance because he couldn't fully transform by himself and he needed two toads. How could this man have a better grasp of control than him? So you weren't lying. You trained Hakujo himself. So you thought I was lying? Damn. I'm gonna have to make you pay for that, said Turner. As he leaped up in the air, he went straight up, prepared to be sliced to pieces. Now, said Jiraiya, as he spew oil as Paul used the wind to push it upwards, as Shima slammed the fire into the oil, a massive stream burst up in the sky. Even the clouds were turned away as this hill of storm the sun actually shined down on it. Jiraiya took a deep breath. Did he kill him? This wasn't a fight to the death, but he had challenged him. Close again, but not close enough. How the hell did you do that, said Jiraiya. That wasn't a clone, you were in mid-ear. I hit you. A quick summon, a showman. You're strong for your age, though. But you didn't use any of your special techniques. I know of the Rasengan. Why didn't you use it? My ex-student created that technique. And I refuse to solid my hand with it ever again. Hmm? But what about his son? Shouldn't you be grateful for him? After all, you bring flowers to his tomb. Yearly. The two toads on Jiraiya's shoulder disperse. As it was done because the Varikage was coming. The man was pissed. They kind of destroyed the hill. Are you willing to split the bill? Said Jiraiya as he looked towards Darna. I say it was a draw, so... 50-50, said Jiraiya. What? All the destruction came from your damn jutsus, you error sending. Jiraiya heard it for a split second the man's voice. It sounded childish, before returning back to normal. Well, it doesn't matter. I've already left, so you can explain. As the shadow clone poofed away, 
Meanwhile, with Uncle, she hadn't went out that day, as she was sitting down watching the matches with Naruto versus that Saya girl, as she had the tapes on shooting exams. But today was his birthday and it was time to go. As she put the tape back, she went to the bathroom and got herself fixed up. Today was his birthday, she couldn't let him see her like a mess. He would be worried, knowing that she was going down this dark path because he was gone and he would be angry. He would tell her to take care of herself and not to worry about him. Yeah, he was like that. As she walked past the couch, as she heard someone waking up, the person was stern. Huh. I almost forgot that you were here, said Uncle. Yujitoa came over to console her. Oh, as Uncle laughed, she had spiked her milk with some sake, as he had to get drunk after last night. Shut up. If you touch her, I'll snap you to pieces, said Yujito in her sleep. As she groaned once again, she wasn't actually waking up. She was just twisting her own on the couch. Come on, wake up. When the two of them exited the apartment after they got ready, they were wearing dark shades, so people couldn't see how red their eyes were. Oh, a voice said. A birthday for a dead breath. As the two women frowned at hearing that voice. What's next? Funerals for the living. The two of them turned as they looked at him. As he stood there, his hood was taken down. You bastard. You're a son of a bitch. And I'll make your life live in hell, mark my words. You can stuff that report where the sun doesn't shine because I'm not giving you crap. As Uncle grabbed Yujito's hand and ran off. As turned a smile. <laughs> yeah. As he placed his hood back up as he made his way to the park. As he saw some shinobis plucking at the weeds and setting up something for a festival it seems. As he recognized the three of them, Mogura. He was big. He could literally root the trees out of the ground and move them elsewhere. While his hands were literally giant claws that could rip through the earth. Hiyori was in the background and he could barely concentrate on her. As she had the ability to just blend in everything and make you lost sight of her. She was a good person to infiltrate and kill someone. As she was placing down the dishes and the plates. The third one was Saya. As she was moving around, her kimono perfectly elegant as usual. He was confused, Shin Kanzen was the third member so he wondered where he was. He shrugged as he leaned back against the tree. As Mogura started to sniff. As Karnavin watched as Mogura looked towards him. Did, did he notice something? Naruto wanted to himself. But the boy then returned back to his work. In Mogura's vision, he had smell, blood, and snakes. He then turned, and he felt someone being visibly surprised. All he saw was a black blur over to the trees. Maybe someone or an object. He returned back to his job. He had to finish this, after all. It was Naruto's birthday, and he had to work quickly. As Tarna knew right now that the Raikai was speaking to Rare about his skills and his attitude could not connect him back to Naruto, but he knew that he risked slipping in battle and using one of his lightning jutsus or the Shidori or the Rasengan. He knew them both but he didn't use them much though but he knew them. He wanted Jirei to use it so he could say that he copied. But he discovered something new. His mind drifted to the Konoha team where they have people that he knew of like Shino. Shino bugs would recognize his chakra easily because his bugs ate chakra. That is why he kept himself in the same Junta state because sensors like C could pinpoint his chakra. That is why he had a army of clones stashed away in the cave that was dispersing and refilling him. It would last for a month. Once he was out of range of C from Kumo, he would stop it. And once he did that, they wouldn't ponder why his eyes were lighter blue and why he had faded whisker marks. They would see him as Turner. He had to do something to cement that in their mind as he looked towards the birthday party that they were going to keep. But he already had his plan. Once he found the Akaski, he would get information about the cabbage in Julke. He would free it and reseal it back within himself. Well, after fighting it and defeating it, then he would go back to Kumo as Naruto, no longer Turner. That is if something didn't go wrong, terribly so. And he ended up dying as Turner. Well, at least when he died as Turner, no one remember him. He would just be that arrogant punk who would just disrespect everyone. Unknown to Tarna, back in the land of three mountains peak, Mifune was writing down something on his table. As there was many things that he was going to do. And he was going to offer his daughter's hand to Tarna. To meet the man finally show the world the kindness that was in his heart. He remembered the first words that he said to him. Make me strong and I will never betray your order. 
for as long as I live. The way he said that, though, it was like he was going to die eventually, and he knew it. Well, a kind-hearted girl like his daughter would work wonders on him. He did hear some things about when the man just came back when they found him at the cave. He was yelling for clean underwear. Well, everyone had their porks. With that, he finished, inking the contract. Time skip. Everyone started to take a seat. As he started talking about trivial things. A lot did not know the boy but free food and drinks. And also, there was just this calm atmosphere around him. While the kids were playing, over towards the tree, they were snoring. Yujito was watching him as he was just lying there. He was wearing his gloves and he could see bite marks on his hand. As the man was sleeping, snoring rather loudly. If he tried anything, anything to ruin her brother, memorial service. They always put it off as a birthday party, but everyone knew what it truly was. If he tried anything to ruin it, she was gonna mess him up. As uncle was munching on some dongles, while sending a murderous glare towards a man every now and then, the right guy had to be calmed down by Jerry and B. As Jerry had to fork over the money for the damage that was done on the mountain, Darui was a bit away from the group. He would be the first one to intercept the man if he tried anything funny. Mogra was in the corner just watching him silently, before just shaking his head. As Saya wants to go over there to challenge him. So that's the man I'll be having as a team leader. A dark skinned woman with green eyes said. As she looked towards Raikagi. Yes. And from what I've heard today. Let's not forget he's a class S bastard. And also. He was able to make Jerry of the sun in sweat. So he's indeed a S class bastard. And he has the right to be that way. Which makes him more even a bastard. Raikagi sama guard rush over towards Raikagi. There are flying objects coming this way. The border patrols are unresponsive. The right Kage eyes widen as explosions rot the place. What looked like small golden cross with corners and shurikens flew down from the heavens. Damn it, why now said Tarna. I already have everything planned. These bastards had to invade now. As Tarna flashed away and grabbed a boy and put him over his shoulder and flashed away with him to grab another one as he placed the kids over to the side. As much as he had to keep up his brash attitude, he couldn't let these kids be skewered in front of him. As he watched the kunai embedded where they once stood. Run along now, he said. As two snakes came from his back and batter away a hail of kunai and shurikens without him even looking. Get the civilians to the refuge, said the Raikage as he grabbed the two kids and handed them over to one of his shinobis. As he looked towards Turner, who actually saved them and he looked like a human for once. Until he spoke, if this is Kumo defenses. This village is surely ass. As Turner then shot forward, as Jerry followed behind him, he still wanted the man to pay him back for half of the damages. As a village crumbled down between the two of them, forcing Jerry to take a detour and he lost sight of the man. Jerry here extended as he slammed his head together and he started to fire Sengbon towards the projectiles that came down from the air. Meanwhile, Turner leaped as a building nearly crushed him. As he went through Hansine, summoning, he said, there was a poof. As Kuro arrived, Kuro. As Kuro looked up, bring me upwards. Let's head straight towards the heart before anyone else catch on. Kuro nodded as he flapped his wings and went up. This brings back memories, Kuro said. By the way, you're not the only one that has gotten stronger. Look what I can do. As his tail started to spin as clouds started to gather, an electric storm as he threw it right towards the squadron of men, vaporizing them. And then it goes bang. Wind style, said Kuro. A giant wind blast slammed right into the electrical storm. As it was sent everywhere, slamming into the enemy ninjas, they had strange flying machines on their back like wings. As smoke came from their char, destroyed bodies as they fell. Unknown to them, Yujito was lashing on to the tail of Kuro. As she had saw, the man rush off, she did not trust him one bit, thinking that somehow he had something to do with this. So she went behind him, and when Kuro was summoned, she just jumped on. Luckily the storm had passed, and it did not turn her into dust because she would have been hit with the full force of it. B on the other hand was pissed off that he ruined his bro's party as he transformed, as he released the Beiju bomb towards a giant ship that was coming, as the explosion wiped them out. It was chaos so some of the ninjas are landing and he started a fight, except Shiro on the ground was calling the army of snakes that had on the headband. On the kanji, it said tail on, as they all move and charge towards the enemy. Uncle on the other hand extend her hands as snakes pull from her sleeve and start a bit into the enemy ninjas. The right Kage was running like a mad bull, his body coated in lightning as he broke down everything that stood in his path. Nothing could stop him as he crushed 
enemies under one swing. As Karna saw something off in the distance, Kuro, fly towards the thing over there. If my eyes aren't deceiving me, that's a city. A city? The city just sprouted out like mushrooms now, said Kuro. What the hell is this? Say Kuro as he watched the massive, floating city in the sky. Just who the hell is attacking them? And what the hell was going on? As Yujita was climbing up his tail, as a city, there was something being built in front of it. Something opening up, as Kuro watched the chakra start to be gathered at the tip. Oh shit, said Tarna. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see this part, then do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell if you can posted. Remember, share all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of what is coming your way over in Anime King. And also, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was Exiled from the Osuzi Clan. And enjoy that, guys. And yeah, remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And yes, you've heard that correctly. I did have three channels, Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah. Without further ado, I'm um, on for now. See you guys very, very soon. Peace, guys.